Hi, I'm Brad, and I hate NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. Have you ever wondered if you took a modern piece of VR headset technology, crammed them together, took out all the parts that maybe is not needed for something like a tethered PC VR system, just to get as small, but also as high specification as you could, what it would look like, what it would feel like, what it would be like. Well, I got to try one of those headsets and it's now becoming an actual product that you can start pre-ordering. And I'm going to talk about this product because I've actually been trying it out for about two years, not only just giving a lot of feedback, but seeing it change at iteration after iteration. You might be aware of a company known as Big Screen. They've been in VR pretty much since the resurgence of consumer VR. They were purely a software developer. They made a, a social VR movie theater experience. They can go in with friends and watch paid movies uh, that they would license and stuff. And now they're trying to hop into the hardware realm um, purely for PC VR. Now this is a headset I've tried multiple times, as I said, and I'm gonna talk about those stories in detail. But first I wanna just go over the press release and the uh, specifications so you know what I'm talking about before I go into my rants. Big Screen introduces Beyond, the world's smallest headset, weighing in at a stunning 127 grams, well, without head strap and wire, to get a nice tiny form factor. They're touting that it has next generation displays and optics. I think for the most part, they are pretty much right on the ball with that. They are sporting two micro OLED displays with a resolution of 2560 by 2560 per eye. Um, and they're using a sort of RGB stripe pattern for these displays. It's basically everything I've been talking about for the past two years actually coming to a product later this year. And they're pairing it with custom pancake optics. And we'll talk more about how custom they are because the custom is kind of a big keyword for this product. The field of view is around the Quest 2, um, but it gets to a 28 pixels per degree, which is getting close to like the actual uh, normal human resolution or visual resolution that most people see on a daily basis. So we're, we're, we're so close to it. Now this is the one gimmick that is kind of interesting and might be a deal breaker for some or like the best thing ever for others. So instead of doing a one size fits all sort of concept where you have an IPD adjustment, you have different uh, facial pads, different head straps and everything. Uh, when you want to pre-order this thing, you'll get an email and you, it requires an iPhone to do uh, with, with the face ID camera, the LiDAR short range sort of sensing to do an actual 3D face scan. And they use that face scan to not only get your IPD measurements and everything, but they custom mold the actual fabric or the, uh, the the weird material of the face pad, so it actually contours completely perfectly to your face. And uh, as someone who has tried two different times, uh, they, they, they've molded this for me, it is really interesting and actually works pretty well with whatever uh, process they're doing there. This is a headset that is literally tailored for you. So if you wanna show your friends or whatever, and they might have very different values, that is going to be a problem. Also, if you don't have a more recent iPhone, that is a problem. And maybe some people will stop watching there because that's just something they can't solve. Because from what I understand is the Android, um, not only the hardware ecosystem, there's not very much high end short range LiDAR systems on even the Samsung phones or whatever. But there's no like standardized software to be able to easily develop for, especially from a startup like this. It's a very interesting concept. We'll talk more about the comfort when I get into my experiences, but that's that's a big selling feature of this headset. Now the Beyond uses SteamVR Lighthouse 2.0 tracking. Uh, another thing where it's for me, this is kind of the one thing that I'm probably really excited about. Um, I love Lighthouse. I'm still very invested in that ecosystem. I do full body tracking all the time. So that's one major reason. So if you have an index or something, this might be something you're looking at as an upgrade because this headset will not include any controllers in the box. It's purely just the HMD. They expect you to buy lighthouses or controllers separately. And the pricing and availability, uh, it's available for pre-order today, February 13th, starting at $1,000 for, again, just the HMD, the base strap and everything. Apparently they're gonna have a upgradable audio strap uh, attachment later on for a, a, a separate purchase. But in this press release, there's nothing about that yet. So we'll see when or what uh, that will entail. Now, if you're still with me after talking about all these specs, I do want to talk about my actual experiences. Not only the most recent one I had, I don't have a unit yet here, but I will have one apparently pretty soon. They're going to be sending one. Um, but I actually flown out two different times. The first time was almost two years ago. 
And that time, the <laughs> pro everything you're seeing here and hearing me discuss about is a prototype. But that first time was like literal 3D printed prototype, like very, very, it felt like it could break. Uh, there was a lot of issues with it. And when I went there, uh, I was really excited because it was the first micro OLED pancake headset that I got to try, um, even if it was a prototype, because I was talking about it so much uh, starting back then that it was kind of crazy to finally get it in, on my head and see how tiny a headset could be and maybe the future in a couple years. But that headset had a lot of issues. Uh, the biggest issue I had with it was brightness at the time. I really complained about that. Everything felt very dark and dreary. Uh, you would go out into the beginning of Half-Life Alex, where you just see the entire city and which is supposed to be broad daylight with like you see the entire city, the Citadel and everything all lit up from the, the sunlight. It felt like more like a dusk or dawn. And that was the biggest feature I complained about back then. Um, so I was like, please figure this out. Like, please, like I, it can't be a product until I figure it out. There were some other issues probably with the device back then. But because I was just so determined about these these optical issues I was seeing, there's also a lot of color banding around the edges. It was really bad. Now, fast forward a year later to, well, now that's last year, uh, the CEO of Big Screen invited me back saying, hey, we made some huge updates to this headset. Would you like to come see if it's maybe closer to what you would decide is a product or worth selling? So I did get to fly there again and try it for about um, a day uh, in their offices and that is when I was like, OK, this thing is way closer to being finished. They're starting to use some uh, early injection molding and stuff. Uh, they did another 3D scan of my face. Everything felt good. They were using new fabrics or, or, or materials for the facial pad. And all the optics and visuals started to look good, like actually way more closer to something I would want to use every day. And I even said that uh, at the time I was like, OK, if you ship me this right now, this is already close to replacing my index is what I told them, which anyone who watched this channel knows that would be a pretty high praise. Now, there was obviously still some issues and I, and I don't know if they've improved. I've talked to some people that have more recent units and some things might still be an issue. But I just want to talk about all the different experiences. So the first thing I want to talk about the, the pros of this headset from when I last tried is Obviously, resolution um, It's 2560 by 2560 per eye and it's using pancake lenses. So it's very, very in focus. It looks really good. Environments look so crisp and it's and it's micro OLED. So you actually get that rich contrast, all the colors and the deep blacks. And the one experience that really blew me away trying a super high resolution micro OLED with all the, the deep blacks and contrast. Um, not only is Half-Life Alex normally a pretty dark and dr dreary in a good way, sort of game spooky, but I made a, a custom map that I wanted to kind of tweak that even more so where you're kind of like walking through an abandoned mine with head crab zombies and everything. And in my mind, when I was creating that map and, and doing the lighting and everything, I wanted it to look pitch dark uh, in a lot of areas and very horrifying, right? That, that was my, my goal. And when I play tested the map with my index, I realized LCD kind of sucks for that. Like I, I could never get it to what I had in my mind because the, the hardware just didn't express the art I was trying to do for that. And this was the first time I got to try it with a micro OLED headset, that same map I built a couple years prior. And I was like, this is the way I intended this. This is this is amazing. I, I'm, I'm going to crap my own pants, even though this is the, this is the map I made. I, I know where everything is. And that is really special and gives like developers or software programmers a, a, a very important tool. Like I know people are like LCD is fine and, you know, OLED has some issues too. But again, I really do prefer that and uh, matching with the, the, the high resolution, and everything, it looks great. FOV is probably the one thing that people are nervous about. They see this tiny headset, um, they see the numbers. I feel like the FOV is similar to Quest 2. Um, if that bothers you, then maybe this is already something you don't care about. But again, when you have like such high resolution and, and such a like light form factor on your face, those other problems with FOV and everything kind of go away because you'll be able to use this for hours, especially if you're into um, pulling up a mattress in your VR room just so you can sleep in beautiful environments in VR, which, yeah, I did. I did test falling asleep in this headset because that's just one of those things I can see people doing, including me. It's it's that level of comfort and you're constantly tethered to a PC 
So you don't have to worry about that battery issue if you want to do something like that. Now there is one optical issue I did notice in the latest prototype I tried that I think it's kind of inherent to Pancake itself. And um, I think in some scenarios you will notice it quite a bit. So Pancake lenses, uh, basically how they work is they reflect uh, the, the light path like kind of double, they, they fold the light path. And sometimes you'll get sort of ghost images or, or reflections of very high uh, contrast images. And one time I went to a VR chat world called Aquarius where there's like all these uh, these jellyfish in a purely black uh, aquarium, like a very deep sea aquarium. And the jellyfish were actually kind of like they were replicated over and over um, in this high contrast environment. This is not something you see as much in the Quest 2. The Quest 2, or I should say the Quest Pro, I'm sorry. The Quest Pro has a bunch of coatings and they definitely focus on getting that uh, inherent issue with Pancake out there as much as they can. You'll still see that sometimes in Quest Pro, but in this headset, I think you might see it a bit more in some of those scenarios where in fact, I would try to load up the same scenarios in the Quest Pro and wouldn't see that, but would see it in this headset, for example. It's not in every situation. Uh, people who've pl played Beat Saber in the headset, which is another pretty high contrast game, have not experienced it. Um, but there's some other issues you might experience if you're someone like a Beat Saber play, uh, player or anything like moving your head a lot, moving your body a lot. So this headset focuses heavily on the goggles or glasses form factor. You're kind of seeing that a lot right now. And I get it. It's really enticing to want to go for that and, and including the way you design the strap itself. And companies say to themselves, well, this is like under 200 grams. It, it's got to be possible to just have all the pressure on your ears, just like a pair of glasses. Well, most people who wear glasses, uh, like actual prescription glasses, those things are like, what, 35 to 60 grams at max. And even those people don't a lot of time enjoy wearing glasses. When you're talking about three times that average size or, size or weight, um, yeah, you're gonna, that, that basic strap it comes with, um, I know they changed it since I tried it, but I, I still hear some complaints here and there. I will want to put a some sort of top strap mod onto, the, onto this thing. Like same with the Quest Pro. The Quest Pro is like way heavier, but having uh, all the pressure in one places that you're not used to in a general basis or, or what, there's maybe some front heaviness. Even for something as light as this, I, I don't like the common glasses head strap or goggles head strap. I really think top straps are still very valuable. Uh, even if they don't look as fancy as the competitor products or whatever. This headset also does not have any built-in uh, speaker audio. It does have a microphone. Uh, and actually, the microphones are really good. Um, I, I, I've seen record, or I should say, I've heard recordings of people using the headset to test it. And it sounds like index quality, very close to it, um, if not actually there. Which is crazy that not many headsets are at index quality uh, for microphone for four years now that the headset's been out. Um, audio quality for talking to people and most social VR things is so important. It, it's crazy that people still don't focus on it, but that's there. But the lack of speakers is annoying. It kind of brings me back to my issues with PSVR 2. I know that comes with earbuds and yeah, but um, they expect people to basically either do something like a wireless headphones over the kit that you provide yourself or use a USB-C. There's an extra USB-C port that you can plug in any sort of uh, audio device there, including a optional head strap that they will sell later. The funny thing about that head strap, I haven't seen it, but I saw, maybe saw some prototypes. It seemed like they were actually going to do a hard strap for it as well with the top strap. So. It's unfortunate that it's not coming out right away with this headset because I really, really would pre prefer that. Um, but luckily the actual head straps themselves come out pretty easy and I, I imagine the DIY community will be able to do a lot of stuff with this headset because of that. But everything other than what I complained about is pretty much spot on for I would what I would expect from a startup being able to jump into hardware for their first time. It's actually really impressive what they've done here. Um, Obviously, they're relying on stuff like SteamVR, which it runs completely native in SteamVR. It uses Lighthouse, so you need to provide those. You need to provide your own controllers. But if you are an index owner, maybe for more than a couple of years now, this is maybe something you want to look into as an upgrade for just the headset. I, I think for me, um, even though it has all those cons and everything, I will be able to get this headset closer to where I want it to be 
and it would be around probably the Quest Pro price after I do that maybe. Um, Cause I do want to like change out DIY the, the head strap. I will need a nice pair of maybe wireless Bluetooth headphones that I connect to my PC. I want all those things put together, but because it's running a lighthouse, I can do full body tracking natively. I can have everything in my Steam library work. And it's still a very light headset when I get everything working and it looks great. It looks beautiful. Um, it just makes me excited that this is like the first wave of micro OLED headsets and it's coming from a startup. There's been some news today about like how Meta is like partnering uh, with SK Hynix and LG with a triangle sort of partnership to make micro OLED for future hardware devices. And we're talking about custom made uh, displays and everything. There's a huge wave of micro OLED on the horizon. Apple's expected to use micro OLED. It's you, when you look at this headset, I want you to think about what has been possible for a startup and what is possible for the big boys as well. But until all those big boys come out for this headset, I think it fits what I'm into and what I would like actually out of a product. Anyway, that's everything I had to say about the uh, Beyond, uh, Big Screen Beyond. If you're interested in any more well, my experiences, you can go to my Discord channel, bradspells.com slash Discord, or leave a comment and I probably will answer it the best of my ability, or maybe I'm sure other YouTubers are um, also talking about it today, so they might answer your questions too. So check around on the, the internet today, and I hope it surprised you. Bye.